everyone, another week has passed and we are back on this Sunday morning to worship God with all of our hearts. We'll spend this time remembering how much God loves us and showing how much we love Him back. Are you ready? Let's get started. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of sins, the forgiveness of sins, and the the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi friends, my name is Pastor Diana, and friends, it's such a beautiful day outside. I hope you guys have a lot of fun, but before you guys go out and play, we need to hear the Word of God. And before we start, we're going to need Bible Boys. So, if everyone can get up and give it a big, let's go Mateo! Hi, I'm Bible Boy, and I'm going to read the Bible verse for you guys today. John 5, verses 1 to 5, the healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which is in Aramaic. It is called Bathsheba, and is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed, one of who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. John 5 verses 1 to 5. Wow, Bible Boy, thank you so much for reading today's message. And now friends, or children of God, have you guys ever gotten hurt or sick before? Hmm. What kind of things help when you're feeling bad or physically sick? Is it Band-Aid? Medicine? A kiss from your mother? Well, you might get a band-aid to put over a little small cut or scrape. Or perhaps you have an itch or sore muscles and you put ointment on it. Maybe you have a big cast if you break even a bone. And if you have the flu or an infection, you might have to take medicine to feel better and get rid of the germs that are inside of your body, right guys? Well, all of these things help your body to heal and feel very different. But you know, ultimately, it's not the band-aid that fixes your skin or the medicine that heals your headache. Those things are sort of like side helpers, but it's really God who's working in us to make us new and heal our bodies. What about the inside though? Not just our tummies or our lungs. What about our feelings and even our actions? What can help those things? Well, God takes care of those things too. You know, in the Bible, we see God heals people and He took care of many people who were sick, just like we'll see in our gospel story today. You see, He helped people who couldn't walk or even see. He even brought people back to life who were dead. You see, Jesus did amazing miracles, especially during His time on earth, and He helped people who needed Him. He also showed that He loved people. He took care of them on the inside, and some even came to Him who had evil spirits and had bad, yucky things on their skin. But Jesus healed them too. How many of you guys have ever seen a geyser? Hmm. Well, it's hot water and steam that comes from the earth. How many of you have ever seen a natural hot pool? What makes the pool very hot? Well, friends, it springs from the underground. And in today's story, we are going to learn about a pool of water that people thought were very, very special. And now in today's story, it takes place in a very special Jewish feast. The Bible doesn't say which feast it was. It could have been one of the three main festivals that required Jewish men to travel to Jerusalem over the Pentecost or over the Passover. Could have been the Pentecost, Passover, or Tabernacle. I'm not sure, it could have been one of those. But a big wall with many gates surrounded the city of Jerusalem. And the reason for that was because Jesus entered into a place called the Sheep Gate 
and that was the gate where sheep were washed for sacrifices for the temple. And now in the city of Jerusalem, there was a big pool of water. It was a beautiful pool with porches built around it so that people could sit and rest. Sometimes the water in the pool was so calm. Sometimes the water would just bubble up. And there were a few pools around Jerusalem, even today. And now this pool is believed to be one that was discovered deep below the level of present day Jerusalem. It has five porches or, you know, five things around it. And stairways at the corner of the pool allowed people to walk inside the water. Underground springs probably fed the pool immediately. And in the days of Jesus, people believed that an angel stirred the water. They thought that the first person to get into the stirred water would be healed. And this would explain why so many sick people were lying around the pool. It was sort of a weight of desperation. And this might seem silly to us, but remember the lack of medicine knowledge or medicine back then. So when one was desperately ill, one would try things over and over again. And in today's story, many sick people like to go to this pool. Some were blind, some were paralyzed, other could not walk. They came to the pool and they waited up for the water to just bubble up. People believe that if they touch the bubbling water, well, if it stopped bubbling, they would be made well. And in today's story, one day, Jesus passed by the pool and saw one of the men lying down beside the pool all alone. He noticed that the man was so sad, so he stopped to talk to him. The man could not stand or walk because his legs did not work very properly. He was sad because he had been unable to walk for 38 years. And every time the water bubbled up, the man tried to get up to touch it but he could not. He was also sad because he had no friends to carry him to the pool. Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? Well, what do you think this man said? He's been sick for 38 years. Well, he had been waiting for the pool and he was in a very hopeless state. He was unable to walk and he's been in that condition for so many years. There could have been numbers of reasons why he wasn't able to walk in the first place. But certainly after all these years, his legs were withered and totally useless. And this man had been brought to the pool, but he knew that he could never get into the water in time. Well, when the water stirred. And this man told Jesus that he really wanted to get better, but there was no one who could carry him to the bubbly water. He was very, very sad. He thought that no one even cared for him. Aww. And there was something about the man that made Jesus notice him and want to help. What a shock! He must have had when Jesus asked, well, do you want to get well? He doesn't even say yes. He just tells Jesus his story to make Jesus understand how helpless the situation was. But Jesus knew that the real power was not in the bubbly water. The power lies within God. But Jesus cared that the man was sad. He listened to the man and then he said something very surprising. He said this, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And as soon as Jesus said this to the man, the man was cured. For the first time in 38 years, he was able to stand up and walk. He did just as Jesus said, he picked up his mat and walk. This miracle was instant. There was no prayer or laying on hands. No one had to send money into a television, stand in front of a crowd. Jesus just told him to get up and walk. And the man did so immediately. The man was so happy and excited that he didn't even notice Jesus slipping back into the crowd. People asked the man who made him well. The man couldn't answer because he didn't even know the name of the man who had healed him. Well, we know it was Jesus and that is his name. And later he saw Jesus at the temple and Jesus told the man to always be good. He was so happy to see Jesus. He was so happy to see the man who had made him well. 
friends, did you know in the Bible that the Jews were more sad or concerned about the fact that the man was walking on the Sabbath day or working on the Sabbath day, carrying his mat, than the fact that a miracle had even been performed? Friends, but do you know the greatest thing that he did? Jesus, the greatest thing that he ever did was he was the powerful healer. He died on the cross for our sins. He was stripped and beaten on the cross and people even made fun of him, well, for helping others. But Jesus knew that he had to go through the most awful pain and death. He paid the price of our sins so that by his wounds, we are healed. As it says in Isaiah 53, five, he came back to life and he promised to always be with us. And one day he would return. And because of this, we will have hope. Even though things are painful or hard, well, friends, these days there's a lot of talk about sickness and people were worried even about coronavirus and all of those things. Will the vaccine make us better? Will we wear these masks forever? When will things improve? And we don't know all of these answers to other health challenges that we all face. Hmm. And sadly, not all of our prayers will get answered as we hope for. But Jesus still heals people even today. But sometimes people don't physically heal as we wish. And sometimes people that we love will die. But Jesus warns us that there will be trouble in this world. He also promised that he will overcome the world. We might not always get the physical healing that we want, but we know that he already healed our hearts. Jesus took our sins away, took all of our sickness away when he died on the cross. Even if we die, we will live. He will comfort and love us no matter what is happening. And Jesus is the final hope and the final answer. And there might be many things that we don't know or understand, but our hope is in Christ. He has already taken care of so many important things. And because of that, we know we are God's children. And we can always pray for what we need. And of course, we can thank God for giving us what we need most. Friends, why don't we do that now? In today's story, we met a man who could not walk for 38 years. And we remember that Jesus has the power to heal. It wasn't the pool, it was all Jesus. And now friends, like I said before, many times in our lives, sometimes we get a sickness that Jesus does not heal immediately. But we always remember our hearts, our sins, our past, our darkness, all of that, He forgives immediately and He heals our heart immediately. I pray my friends at home will always remember, even though the Pharisees were mad that Jesus was working on a Sabbath and that the man was holding the mat on a Sabbath, we always remember our God reigns, He lives, and He's always with us today. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your precious word today. As we listen to the story about the man by the pool, we remember that Jesus heals not only our physical skin, but he heals our heart as well. So Lord, help us to always remember that he is powerful and he is always with us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey friends, what did you guys think about today's story? Pretty cool, huh? He not only heals us on the outside, and sometimes he doesn't, but he will always heal us on the inside. Bye guys! Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses who we Forgive who trespass against us. Leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For dying is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Jerusalem, just past the Sheep Gate, there was a mysterious pool called Bethesda. Legend had it that once in a great while, an angel would come to stir the waters of the pool and the first person to step in would be healed from whatever they suffered. It was why many sick and crippled people filled the area. But on this particular Sabbath day, Jesus stopped at Bethesda on his way through Jerusalem. 
In the large crowd of sick and suffering people, there was a certain crippled man. He had been disabled for much of his entire life, and although he dreamed of the day he would step into the waters and be healed, he knew he didn't have much of a chance. He had always been alone and without help, and there was no reason to believe that this would ever change. So can you imagine the shock when Jesus approached him? Do you want to be healed? He asked the suffering man. The man answered, I cannot be helped. There is no one to take me to the pool when it is stirred, and I cannot get there myself. The event was attracting the curiosity of onlookers, wondering what Jesus was doing, and the criticism of religious leaders, waiting for some reason to hate him even more. But Jesus paid no mind to the surrounding crowd. He said to the man, get up, take your mat, and walk. And at once, the man was healed, and he picked up his mat and walked. When the religious leaders saw the man walking around with his bed, they spoke to him. It's the Sabbath. Who told you to pick up your bed and walk? But the man did not know the name of his healer. Later that day, Jesus found the healed man in the temple, and it was then that he revealed himself. He was Jesus, the one who had delivered him from a life of disease and suffering. Jesus said to him, You have been made well. Sin no more, that nothing worse will ever happen to you. The man now knew who his Savior was, and that he was healed. He was forgiven, and he was given the opportunity of a brand new life. Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, now it's 1st Timothy, then it's 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, and Hebrews, James, now it's 1st Peter, and then it's 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation, these are the books of the Bible, 